Good morning. I'm so excited to introduce Sister Nancy Rose Gukwa to you all. Sister Nancy Rose is a member of the first class that admitted women to the United States Military Academy at West Point. After graduation in 1980, she served on active duty for over six years and then continued her career in the reserves, earning the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. After her active duty service, she enjoyed a career in the financial and banking industries. Then, heeding the call to religious life, she joined the Benedictine Sisters of Perpetual Adoration in Clyde, Missouri in 2006. Let's welcome Sister Nancy Rose. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sister Nancy Rose, and I'd like to thank him for her kind introduction. I'm very happy to be speaking here with you today, the Military Council of Catholic Women, because we have so much in common, our faith and our military journey. And a special thanks for all you military women for all your service, you and your spouses and those who support our service personnel. As a former military woman myself, I'll share with you a brief version of my own journey, which took me from New York to West Point, the military, the corporate world, and finally to religious life. Well, the theme of this year's conference is Fiat, Let It Be Done, referring of course, to Mary's response to the angel Gabriel, announcing that she was to be called the mother of God. Well, I'd like to take that theme and apply it to my own story. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm no Mary, but over the years, I too was given a series of choices. I could either stick with my own plan, doing what was right in front of me, or I could say yes to a different path. And in each case, I trusted that God was guiding me, even though like Mary, I couldn't know in advance how God's plan would turn out. Well, as you can see, I'm a nun. And some have asked me if I grew up always wanting to be a nun. Well, not at all. I came from a family of eight and attended Catholic grammar school in New York. But the wonderful nuns who taught us there never asked if I wanted to become one. And it never crossed my mind. Our big family struggled to make ends meet. So I decided that I would become a wealthy lawyer when I grew up. Fast forward to my senior year in high school, September of 75. Congress had just passed a law allowing women to enter the service academies that following summer. Well, my dad, who was a World War II veteran, saw the news on TV and said to me, Nance, how would you like to go to a free college with a bunch of handsome men? Well, I laughed and said, and where would that be? And he said, West Point. So I looked into it. The brochure they sent me told of West Point's motto, duty, honor, country, and its promise to form leaders of character and a chance to serve my country like my dad. Well, I was intrigued, but what about my plan? I was already accepted at St. John's University and I had my scholarships. It seemed like God intervened to give me a choice, either a prosperous lawyer or noble service in the military, which was guaranteed to be an adventure. I chose the latter, fiat, let it be done. Next thing I knew, I was at Beast Barracks, six weeks of grueling military training. I entered with 119 women out of a freshman class of about 1,400. It was tough going for us women since the men gave us a hard time, but that's another story. Four years later, out of the 119 women, about half of us graduated, 62 of us. I was commissioned as second lieutenant in the army. Then I did my officer basic and was then a, a, a commissioned as a second lieutenant and went to my first tour at Fort Bragg in the 82nd Airborne Division. I became a jump master there. Next was a tour in Germany where I was a logistics company commander. By then my five year commitment was up. I went back home to New York where I stayed in the Army Reserves. Since I earned an MBA while still in the service, I found work with a large bank as a mutual fund accounting manager. Well, after five years with the bank, I was ready for a change. And so I started interviewing with other companies in New York. Out of the blue, I got a call from a headhunter 
looking for someone for a position in St. Louis, Missouri. Well, as a typical New Yorker, I said, St. Louis, Missouri, where the heck is that? Somewhere between New York and California, that much I knew. Well, after consulting a map, I booked a flight and did the interview. I was intrigued by the challenge of a startup operation, not to mention the $20,000 a year raise. But what about my plan to remain in New York and to be close to family? Well, once again, God intervened to give me a choice. Somehow I felt deep inside that God was calling me to something new and my destiny was not in New York. So I said yes to God's invitation and headed out for St. Louis. The years passed quickly. I went from managing a department to working directly for the CEO to chief operating officer, and finally uh, to a position on corporate staff as a vice president. By then I was living what seemed to be the good life. I was a vice president, I, I got an annual bonus, I drove a new car and was dating, although fortunately for me, as it turns out, I never did meet Mr. Wright. Well, outwardly, I had climbed the corporate ladder, but spiritually, I was unfulfilled and felt there had to be more to life. Well, once again, God intervened. That same year, my company went through a corporate takeover. I had a choice. I could either stay with the new company and maybe get transferred back to their New York headquarters and be closer to family, or I could take the severance package. Well, spiritually, I felt the need to leave the corporate environment to fully discern God's call. And the severance package gave me the financial freedom to do that. So I said, okay, God, fiat, let it be done. Well, meanwhile, I had left the Army Reserves a few years before because my corporate job had gotten too hectic. Then 9-11 happened. And once again, I felt the call to serve. So I got back into the reserves, but instead of being mobilized to go to Iraq, I served instead at a year on active duty at Scott Air Force Base, not far from St. Louis, at the United States Transportation Command or Transcom, which allowed me to put my logistics skills to good use. I was fortunate to serve stateside where I could still go to daily mass and prayer because I was still discerning where God was calling me. Well, once again, God intervened. My coworker asked me to trade weekend duty. Well, I didn't want to because I had retreat plans that weekend, but he persuaded me. So I changed my plans to the following weekend. It was there that I met a priest, Father Placid. I told him all about my break from the corporate world and my daily prayers to discern where God was calling me. So when I finished, he just looked at me and said, have you ever considered religious life? Well, my jaw dropped, a light bulb went on and everything became crystal clear. Religious life. I knew in my heart that that's what I wanted, even though I had never thought of it before. In that instant, the mystery of my life fell into place. But what kinds of religious order to join? active or contemplative? Well, I initially thought that being an extrovert, I'd be more suited to an active life of ministry. Well, fortunately, a priest named Father Jim had me look at both, and I found myself attracted to a life of prayer. He had me visit several contemplative orders in St. Louis. Well, each one had these bars and grills on the window, and it didn't feel right. Now, don't get me wrong, I like bars and grills, but not that kind. It felt too confining. So I went back to Father Jim and said, now what do I do? Well, he said, there's one more place you can go visit, the Benedictine Sisters of Perpetual Adoration in Clyde, Missouri. Well, I looked it up. Clyde was a little town of 82 people between a cow pasture and a cornfield, a far cry from New York. So when I arrived for a visit at the monastery, a sister escorted me to the chapel for Vespers. The beauty was incredible. The stained glass windows, the beautiful gold tabernacle on the altar. And I had this overwhelming sense 
of finally being home. I just broke down in tears. Well, I was offered admission with an entrance date of August of 2006, but I had a dilemma. I had only two more years in the reserves till my 20 year pension. Well, I explained my dilemma to the sisters, but I was ready to walk away from that 20 year pension. Well, thankfully the sisters came up with a creative solution. They allowed me to enter religious life and at the same time gave me permission to continue my weekend military reserve duty, being a contemplative nun and a weekend warrior as only God can do. Fiat, let it be done. Well, here I am over 14 years later and I wouldn't have changed a thing. My top skills are no longer logistics or finance. It's more about who I am and who God is calling me to be. I guess you could now call me a prayer warrior and I couldn't be happier. In conclusion, I wouldn't be here if I had stuck to my own plans. But God's plan for us is better than anything we can imagine. And the best way to discover God's plan in your life is to develop and nurture a relationship with him through prayer, scripture reading, and listening with the ear of your heart. Like Mary, when we say yes to God's plan, get ready for an adventure. Well, thank you for listening to my story and all the best in discerning God's plan in your lives. I pray that someday soon, the pandemic will be behind us and allow us to meet in person. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Sister Nancy Rose. Your story is just amazing. Um, and I love, I love all the instances where you worked in there. God intervened, God intervenes. He intervenes so often in our life, but you're right that we have to incline the ear of our heart to hear that and to see where he's intervening in our life and giving us that opportunity to say, fiat, let it be done. So thank you so much for sharing your story with MCCW. And we look forward to, to the future when we can all be together again as well. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.